Hello everyone, it's Oshin here from Hiker's Blog. I'm currently out in the Antrim Hills where the weather is quite temperate. But I have a feeling like later on tonight it's going to be a bit colder. I've got my Van Gogh Banshee 200 tent with me and also my Rab Neutrino 300 or 600, sorry. So I'm going to give them a little review whenever I find a place to camp. Um, out in Andrum Hills, like I said earlier, and you can see this there in the background is my rucksack. So, for this review, I'm going to include a quick um, pitching time. I think it's going to be six, seven minutes around about. I've got a, a stopwatch on my watch that I'm going to start before I, I do it, and um, I'll speed it up in the video, and you can see realistically how long it takes to pitch to the Fango Banshee 200. Okay? Right. There we go, five minutes and four seconds, so that's well below the estimated pitching time. And if I um, if I were a betting man, I would say that I could get the essentially the rest of my sleeping bag set up and roll mat done within the next two minutes. So I'll continue the video and uh, and we'll try that now, okay? So, that's me set up camp with um, sleeping bag, roll mat and tent all done within 7 minutes. So, as you can imagine this tent is an absolute breeze to set up. It's easy for easy for all sorts, Duke of Ed groups, um, wild camping, backpacking. That's why it's been so popular um, throughout the last, I don't know how many years they've been making them but it's been a long time. This here is the 2016 version. Um, it's a two-man tent, as the name 200 implies. The, uh, the ground sheet of the tent is 70 denier polyester, so it's, um, it's nice and tough. It won't rub away on you throughout use, you know, on um, rocky ground or, or pebbles or things like that. All those lovely uh, grounds that you have to sleep on whenever you're camping. The guy lines are nice and strong. Um, I'm not sure uh, what the branded Van Gogh name for them are, but um, I'll put that up on screen if I can correct myself. But they are strong, um, I haven't had any issues with them yet, they're easy to peg down, they, they're easy to adjust, and I like the way they come to from two different... Oh, I just forgot, I've got to clip that um, clip into the pole, so anyway they come from two attachment points into then the one one guy line which you can easily tighten you see pull more attention on it the insides as I'll show you now more than comfortable for one a bit of a squeeze if you're trying to get two on a backpacking trip but as you can see one of the the uh, the I would say the biggest selling point or at least one of the biggest reasons I bought this tent was the see-through double doors um, on a night when it's nice and calm quite like tonight and you can sit outside and um, regardless if the wind's coming from this side or if it's coming from the other side you can open up a door and put your feet out and have a nice view with while you're cooking or something like that I'm going to bring you in a bit closer now so you can see some of the storage space where you keep your rucksack and other gear overnight Sorry for this shaky camera, but I've just had to take, take the camera off the tripod because I want to show you some of the, the mesh inner of the tent. So as you can see here, this is just the porch. Um, that's the door down there. And this here is a pocket where you can store um, certain items. There is the same thing on the other side. I just had to check behind me there. And thankfully, Van Gogh have been nice enough to put in some meshing at the top. So this will further help with any condensation problems. It'll let the, the air move nicely in throughout the night, take away any condensation. I wouldn't show you one of my favourite features of this tent, because obviously condensation can be quite a problem when you're camping. And uh, Van Gogh have combated this by giving you a little 
window at the end where your head would traditionally be. Feet go to the small end, head goes to the long end. Tall end, sorry. So we have here mesh netting, small enough so no annoying midge can get in throughout the night or any larger insects. Then if you want and it's too warm, you can also fully open it up. And you, as you can see, that's outside ground where I suppose you could store some more um, combat equipment if you were short of room. I haven't needed to, but that's more space you can do it. So, as you can see here, this is one of the side porches of the tent. This side porch, I would say, in comparison to a 80 litre rucksack, my, my rucksack's a bit empty at the minute, but you just have to excuse that, because there's no tent or sleeping bag in it. You can see there, on its side, works quite well. Also, lying flat, it fits fine. I'm going to unzip the door here just so you can see that there's no protruding rucksack. There we go, everything's nice and tight away. So bringing you around to the other side now, you can see... I'll, I'll just come back and look at it from afar. So the tent here, as we'll see, is... Bit of a focus there, there we go. Um, a tunnel tent in design. Um, which makes it very stable in, in high winds, where you would pitch, um, traditionally pitch the lower end towards the, the direction that the wind is coming from, so it then goes up over the tent and down the other side. But that's not to say that um, if the wind changes overnight you're going to be in trouble and you have to move your tent, because I've found throughout strong winds that, um, that it's quite, quite stable. So just moving on. Now, <coughs> I wasn't aware of this whenever I first got the tent, but I'd like to make you aware of it. So, as you can see, there isn't any porch on this side of the tent, which I wasn't aware of whenever I first bought it. Disappointingly, because had this porch been the same size as that, I think it would make it a bit more um, justifiable to use as a two-man tent for weekends away or extended backpacking trips but unfortunately you have maybe about hands hands width of room along this side whenever the door is closed so all you can really use it for is maybe walking boots or cookware maybe some thin cookware or something like that or I would maybe sometimes put my camera tripod along this side to save space on the other so that was disappointing for me but that's not to say that it's not perfectly adequate if you are using it as a one-man tent. There's plenty of space on the other side where you can store all your rucksacks, your stoves, your shoes, those sorts of things. But it would put me off using it um, with another uh, partner as a two-man tent. Some of the features of this tent are, or some of the best features, should I say, are probably the weight and the selling point. I think Bango's got these both right. The tent weighs. Um, if I believe, uh, or if I remember correctly, it's 2.37 kilograms stated on their website. So allow for a bit of um, tolerance both ways, and you're looking at maybe two and a half kilograms. Which, to me, for a two-man tent or for a one-man tent, as I like to use it with a bit of comfort and room, is more than more than fair. Especially given that the price point, the RRP of this tent goes for somewhere around the region of 130 pounds as of August 2016. These tents are well known and their predecessors for um, for their affordability and a lot of the time you will find them at an even cheaper price on uh, third party websites or in the likes of um, eBay or certain outdoors forums where people are selling on uh, some used kit. So for 130, maybe even 100 pounds, you have yourself a tent that I would be comfortable using for at least three seasons out of the four here within um, the UK. I don't think I don't think that there will be any weather that will seriously, unless it is complete gale force and you would be mad to go out in it anyway, this tent will more or less stand up to what whatever the elements have to throw at you. And again, just I'd like to iterate how how much of a all round tent is. This tent is used for Duke of Edinburgh. This tent's used by backpackers, this tent's used for wild campers, for families, maybe not families, small families, couple, um, 
a couple going away for the weekend perhaps into the hills. So it's used by all. It has mostly gl glowing reviews from what you can read online. Um, probably quite similar to mine in that for the price it's hard to beat just what you get with it. Some of the down points if I had to be picky I would and I suppose it maybe reflects more on Van Gogh as a company but in the past we have had Van Gogh tints specifically the Mirage and um, on a related sort of note the their sister company Force 10 tints we had one of their Vortex 200s which is a big uh, fully geodesic tint as I believe the Mirage 200 is as well. So anyway, the point was that um, we've been out in heavy winds with these tents and while we've stayed perfectly safe and dry and comfortable inside, the, the poles have maybe bent, they haven't snapped, but they have bent through the continuous battering of the high wind and Van Gogh on both occasions have simply directed us to where we can buy replacement parts. Now, for the likes of the Mirage, it may be understandable, but for the uh, the Force 10 Vortex 200, when you buy, especially at that price, a a big mountain tent that they advertise as for expeditions and for for the worst of conditions, you would expect the poles to stand up to to any 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 wind you can think of, and it was a wee bit disappointing whenever we weren't able to get a replacement part free of charge because we didn't believe that it was um, down to our fault. It was, um, I don't know, the strength of the, the poles. So that's uh, sort of related, not related to this tent. I have yet to bend any poles in high winds. I don't know of anybody that has, but I'm sure there's always somebody who takes it out in serious conditions. So like again, just to summarize, um, great tent for the money. Um, it's a, a great all-rounder, perfect for one man and his kit, especially if you like me and you're carrying, I have a tripod and uh, a camera just um, recording this video so if you carry any tripods things like that there's space for it and um, there's space for your boots for your gun and a little bit of space to sprawl out in your tent whenever you've uh, you've walked for hours and you don't want to be cramped up beside somebody nice and warm inside um, and 2.5 kilograms to me is more than justifiable for what you get so i just want to thank you for watching my name's Oshin and you have been watching the Van Gogh Banshee 200 review on Hiker's Blog.